In this video, you will learn how to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. We will cover examples with two real solutions, one real solution, and no real solutions. Towards the end, we will discuss the discriminant of a quadratic equation and how it determines the number of solutions. For a quadratic equation in standard form, the quadratic formula is given by x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Here, x represents the solutions, and a, b, and c are the coefficients of the quadratic equation. If a quadratic equation is given in standard form, as in this example, our first step is to identify the values of the coefficients. Here, the value of a is 1, b is negative 12, and c is 35. Next, we write down the quadratic formula. Then, we substitute the values of a, b, and c into the formula. Now, we simplify this. In the numerator, the negative of negative 12 is positive 12, right? Negative 12 squared is negative 12 times negative 12, which gives us 144. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 35 is 140. In the denominator, we have 2 times 1, which equals 2. 144 minus 140 is 4, right? The square root of 4 is 2. This is the same as x equals 12 plus 2 over 2, or x equals 12 minus 2 over 2. 12 plus 2 is 14, and 12 minus 2 is 10. Dividing 14 by 2 gives us 7, and dividing 10 by 2 gives us 5. Therefore, the solutions are x equals 7 or x equals 5. We can check our solutions by substituting them back into the original equation. Substituting 7, 7 squared is 49, and 12 times 7 is 84. 49 minus 84 is negative 35, and this equals 0, right? Similarly, substituting 5, 5 squared is 25, and 12 times 5 is 60. 25 minus 60 is negative 35, and this equals 0. As you can see, both 7 and 5 are valid solutions. We can actually solve this quadratic equation more easily and quickly using the factoring method, as it is simple to find two numbers that multiply to give 35 and add up to negative 12. These numbers are negative 5 and negative 7, right? So, when we factor this quadratic equation, it becomes x minus 5 times x minus 7, which equals 0. Now, Setting each factor equal to zero and solving for x gives us the solutions. As you can see, the factoring method is easier and faster for this example, right? However, not every quadratic equation can be factored, but all can be solved using the quadratic formula. For instance, in the next example, it is difficult to find two numbers that multiply to give the product of 11 and 7 and add up to 20. Can you find these numbers? It is challenging, right? Although it is hard to factor, we can easily solve it using the quadratic formula. Since it is in standard form, our first step is to identify the values of the coefficients. a is 11, b is 20, and c is 7. Next, write down the quadratic formula. Then, substitute the values of a, b, and c into the formula. Now, simplify this. Inside the square root, 20 squared is 400. 4 times 11 is 44, and 44 times 7 is 308. In the denominator, 2 times 11 is 22. 400 minus 308 is 92. 92 is not a perfect square, but let's see if we can factor out a perfect square to simplify. Let's do a prime factorization. 92 can be factored into 2 times 46 and 46 can be further factored into 2 times 23, right? Since 23 is a prime number, we cannot factor any further. So, 92 is the same as 2 times 2 times 23, which equals 4 times 23. This means 4 is the highest perfect square we can factor out from 92. Notice that these numbers have 2 as a common factor. So, we can simplify this by dividing each of them by 2, right? You can leave your solution as it is, 
or you can also write it to show the two solutions separately. Both of them are acceptable ways of writing the solutions. Notice that both this example and the previous one have two real solutions. This happens when the number inside the square root is greater than zero. In the next example, we will consider a case where a quadratic equation has only one real solution. If you have found this video helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Since it is in standard form, first identify the values of the coefficients. a is negative 9, b is 24, and c is negative 16. Next, write down the quadratic formula. Then, substitute the values of the coefficients into the formula. Now, simplify this. Inside the square root, 24 squared is 576. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36, and negative 36 times negative 16 is 576. In the denominator, 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. The difference inside the square root equals 0, right? The square root of 0 is 0. Adding or subtracting 0 doesn't change anything. So, we are left with negative 24 over negative 18. If we divide both of them by negative 6, it simplifies to 4 thirds, right? Notice that this quadratic equation has only one real solution. This happens when the number inside the square root is equal to 0. Finally, let's consider a case where a quadratic equation has no real solutions. In the previous three examples, the quadratic equations were given in standard form. However, in this example, it is not. To use the quadratic formula, the quadratic equation must be written in standard form. So, our initial step here is to rewrite this equation in standard form. To do this, subtract 10x from both sides of the equation. Next, identify the values of the coefficients. a is 17, b is negative 10, and c is 2. Then, write down the quadratic formula and substitute the values of the coefficients into the formula. Now simplify this. In the numerator, the negative of negative 10 is positive 10. Negative 10 squared is 100. 4 times 17 is 68, and 68 times 2 is 136. In the denominator, 2 times 17 is 34. 100 minus 136 is negative 36, right? Notice that the number inside the square root is negative. Now, if you are in Algebra 1, you are working within the real number system, and in the real number system, we cannot take the square root of a negative number, right? So, the answer to this problem is, there are no real solutions. However, if you are in Algebra 2, this problem instead has two complex solutions. So, we have a few more steps to do. Negative 36 is the same thing as 36 times negative 1, right? This equals the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 36 is 6. From the definition of imaginary numbers, the square root of negative 1 is denoted by i. So here, we replace the square root of negative 1 with i. Therefore, the square root of negative 36 is 6i. Notice that 10, 6 and 34 all have 2 as a common factor. So we can simplify this by dividing each of these numbers by 2, right? Since this is a complex number, you need to rewrite it in the standard form of complex numbers, which represented as a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. So we have 5 over 17 plus or minus 3 over 17i. You can either leave your solution as it is, or write it to show the two solutions separately. When solving the quadratic equations, you have observed that for the first two examples, we got two solutions, for the third one we got one solution, and for the last one, we got no real solutions. This is determined by the discriminant of a quadratic equation, which is the expression inside the square root of the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant can be positive, zero, or negative, and this determines the number and type of solutions for a given quadratic equation. When the discriminant is greater than zero, the quadratic equation has two real solutions. When the discriminant is zero, the quadratic equation has one real solution. When the discriminant is less than zero, the quadratic equation has no real solutions. 
but it does have two complex solutions. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.